Stray Blade is a game that flew completely under my radar. I feel like I might have seen some gameplay of it previously, but before I watched the Lazy Peon video earlier this weekend, I had completely forgotten about its existence. However, after watching some gameplay, I felt like I should give it a shot, and that turned out to be a bit of a mixed bag. I picked up the game on PlayStation 5 and streamed it for about 5 hours on Sunday, and if you were around for the beginning of that, yeah, it wasn't pretty. But things improved a little bit throughout the stream, and while it's not a slam dunk, it definitely grabbed my attention enough for me to put quite a few more hours on it today. I'm currently sitting at around 10 hours, and I believe I've seen enough of the game to formulate a solid opinion. For those of you coming into this video blind, Stray Blade is an action RPG which pulls some inspiration from the Souls-like genre with a hint of Metroidvania elements. The game was developed by Point Blank, which as far as I'm aware is their first foray into this genre, and because of that, I don't want to be too harsh, as I can definitely see some potential in this game that I hope the team can hone in on to eventually output something greater. It's also important to mention this is a more budget price title, currently sitting at 35 bones, with a 20% discount on select platforms, as such, you should adjust your expectations accordingly. Now let's get started. Visuals and animations are up first. Don't worry, Bucci. I'm sure this is the last time. <sighs> Visually, the graphics are good, but not impressive from a fidelity standpoint. However, the art style is gorgeous. And I know not everyone is a fan of this more colorful, stylized art style, but I like it a lot and it was potentially one of the biggest reasons that kept me pushing through the game, despite the fact I wasn't enjoying the combat at all when I first started playing. Now, when it comes to animations, I think they're okay overall, but there's definitely a lot of room for improvement. While there were definitely some standouts like the hammer backstab, which is essentially a golf swing that yeets enemies around, and the axe finisher, where you kick an enemy in the gonads before smashing their face into the dirt, there's also a lot of animations that feel quite stiff, which can detract from the overall experience. Another issue with the animations is that the hit lag mixed in with the excessive use of slow motion on most attacks, both yours and the enemies, caused some serious issues with combat pacing, especially at higher difficulties where you need precise parry timing just to survive and the game keeps slowing everything when you land a hit and when you get hit, making it very clunky to get the rhythm of the encounters down. I'm sure we're going to come back to this later. Now? No! Mm -hmm. Okay. As for the game's performance on the PlayStation 5, it's acceptable, but not particularly good. There are noticeable frame drops on various occasions, which can sometimes be exaggerated by the previously mentioned slow motion and hit lag, particularly during encounters with multiple enemies. I don't really have much to say about the sound. It's okay, some of the guitar bits and the soundtrack surprised me a little in a good way, but they weren't frequent enough to really make it stand out. I know. I have a big bias towards guitars and game soundtracks, it is what it is. The voice acting is pretty decent, but also not particularly impressive. Is too far. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, the world of Stray Blade is the game's biggest selling point. I loved the art style and I was really enjoying exploring the world. It felt incredibly immersive to the point where I was mostly exploring every nook and cranny rather than really following the story. The story, by the way, hasn't really grabbed me. I feel like it's average so far. It's your usual lone wolf caught up in a situation where he has to work together with a quirky character and his lone wolf antics eventually drive a minor wedge in the relationship, which is quickly patched up with the quirky character saving him and then bonding over the mishap in pursuit of a greater goal. Maybe it gets better, but for now it's pretty standard. However, with the grip the world has on me, the story doesn't really need to be excellent. Now, one of the coolest features of the world in Stray Blade is how it evolves as you progress through the game. 
For example, early on, I came across a group of small monsters in this temple looking area. After defeating them and progressing further into the game, I eventually found myself passing by that area again as I was exploring and then a third time in pursuit of a story objective. And in all those instances, the area was different. The first time I went there, it had monsters, like I previously mentioned. The second time, it had a couple of tents and soldiers patrolling the area. The third time, it had a bunch of structures built up, a forge, and a higher tier of soldiers roaming around. And this is just one example. Most of the areas in the game that have combat encounters change significantly as you progress through the game. In fact, during the stream, there was a section where I was questioning chat if I was losing my mind because one of the areas looked downright unrecognizable with makeshift wooden structures and new enemies. The level geometry and certain interactable elements were the only thing that convinced me I had previously been there. The dynamic nature of the world rewards exploration, which is one of my favorite aspects of the game. And sometimes that exploration also rewards cosmetics, as you'll find dyes that you can use to customize the color of your character's armor and weapons. And this system is actually quite detailed, allowing you to individually change three colors of each piece of gear you're using. The world and exploration in Stray Blade are the strongest elements of the game as far as I'm concerned, but I don't know if that is going to be enough for everyone. Now let's jump into the combat in Stray Blade, which in my opinion is one of the game's weaker elements. I started the game on the challenge difficulty because I wanted to take the combat seriously and master it to the best of my ability. This was most definitely the wrong decision, but in order to explain why, I need to give you some more details about the combat. You see, in Stray Blade, enemies have health and posture, while the player has health and energy. Energy is responsible for every action you take, attacking, dodging, parrying, and blocking if your weapon has a shield. Essentially, it's like stamina in Dark Souls. Posture works like you would expect. If you hit or parry an enemy, its posture goes down. If you fully deplete the posture, you can execute them. Now, enemy attacks come in two varieties. Red attacks, which must be dodged, and blue attacks, which must be parried or blocked. Last second dodges and parries also recover your energy. Now the problem with this is that on the higher difficulties, the bloated hit points on enemies, at least early on, are beyond ridiculous. So naturally you'll think to yourself, well, I guess I have to bust that posture gauge for an execution. And to that I say, you sweet summer child. Because the developers made the decision to tie posture recovery times to difficulty level, and on the challenge difficulty, the gauge recovers really fast. How fast, you might ask? Let me give you an example. If you hit an enemy, and the AI decided to back up just slightly, and I do mean slightly, it will begin recovering before you can physically hit him a second time. Here's another example. At one point, I was using shield and spear because I wanted more reach precisely to try and break posture more effectively. This weapon has a special shield bash attack that deals heavy posture damage and sends enemies flying. So I go up against an enemy, I hit them twice and use the special attack fully breaking the enemy's posture, who was then sent flying from the special attack. I instantly start running towards the enemy to deliver the execution. Whilst mid-air, the enemy starts recovering the posture gauge. By the time he fell, the posture was at like 60%. By the time he got up, he was fully recovered. Keep in mind, I literally started running to follow up on my attack the moment I hit him with the special. That was absolutely ridiculous. And that is not even considering the fact the game will often punish you hard for trying to keep that kind of aggression up as enemies have hyper armor through most attacks because they want you to rely on dodging and parrying. And therein comes problem number two. Parry timings are very tight, and even the lowliest of mobs took lessons from Margaret the Fell and they'll heavily delay their telegraphed attacks. Now, do you remember how during the visuals and animation section I told you we'd be coming back to the extreme hit lag and slow motion the developers decided to implement into nearly every attack in the game? 
<laughs> yeah, that feature is going to completely destroy your parry timings, especially in encounters with more than one enemy, so good luck with that. Once I lowered the difficulty to adventure and stopped taking the combat so seriously, the rest of the game became much more enjoyable. As far as I'm concerned, the numbers only approach the difficulty greatly undermined the combat experience. I believe the developers could have created a more engaging combat system if they had focused on balancing it around one or maybe two difficulties, like a normal and a story mode or something like that. But as it stands, adventure feels way too easy, challenge feels atrocious with giga bloated health pools and supersonic posture recovery, and I don't even want to think about the harder difficulty of Farron must die. And that, my friends, is why Souls games only have one difficulty, so From Software can actually put all their effort into balancing combat in a way that feels challenging and rewarding. And I will die on this fucking hill, I don't care. However, I would like to hear from players that chose the route of playing the harder difficulties in Storyblade. How's your experience been so far? Let me know in the comment section below. The thing that should use a shrine. It always proved useful. Character progression in Strayblade revolves around three key elements: the skill tree crafting, and weapons. Initially, I was somewhat confused by the way the developers integrated these elements because, you see, in most Souls-like games, I tend to look for a weapon I really like, and I invest everything I have into that weapon since resources are typically limited and you don't want to waste resources upgrading weapons you're not going to use. However, Stray Blade expects players to craft as many weapons as possible because mastering a weapon, which consists of using it to kill a few enemies, unlocks passive skills in the skill tree and is in fact beyond the first couple of upgrades the only way to passively increase your character's power. Once I realized this was what's expected, I stopped looking for that one weapon and crafted everything I could get my hands on, which led to a lot of experimentation as there's no upgrade levels on the weapons, and you can swap between them to your heart's content based on which moveset you prefer or which moveset is advantageous at the time. So even though the combat was one of the weaker aspects of the game, the skill tree and crafting systems added some much needed depth and variety to the gameplay experience, which improved it, albeit only slightly. So in conclusion, my experience with Stray Blade has been a mixed bag so far. While the game's combat doesn't feel great for the reasons I outlined previously, the game's world still has me hooked. I really dig the art style and just enjoy getting immersed and roaming around between the different locations to see what has changed and look for more materials to craft new weapons to try out. The dynamic world is a really neat feature. The combat definitely needs some work, especially with all the slow motion and hit lag stuff. At least let us turn that off in the options or change the intensity because it really messes with the pacing and timing of inputs. The difficulty could use some fine tuning as well. As it stands, I'm not sure if I can recommend the game as a majority of my audience, much like myself, is heavily focused on the combat side of things, which for this game is an aspect I still find somewhat lacking. But I still wanted to make this video mostly to praise this team's first entry into the Souls-like genre, as I think there's definitely some potential here. What do you think about Stray Blade? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit it up with a like. If you did not enjoy it, hit it up with a dislike. Feedback is important. If you want more content from me, subscribe, bell notification icon, all of that jazz. I'll see you in the next one. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out.